Any uh, discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. The next item on the agenda, mm -hmm. Mr. Clerk. Proposed resolution of the mayor and What's city. Tab? J. Tab J. Tab J. Go ahead. Yeah. Proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to execute the purchase of 105 Panasonic laptops for the North Miami Police Department, <coughs> piggybacking on the Western States construction contracting alliance master price agreement for computer equipment, uh, peripherals, and related services number B27172 <coughs> through the State of Florida Department of Management Services, alternate source contract number 250-WSCA-10-ACS and the amount not to exceed $150,000 and compliance with the FBI, FBI's National Crime Center and the Florida Crime Center providing for effective date and all other purposes. Move approval. Second. Uh, any uh, public hearing? Public hearing is now open. Any citizen wish to be heard, please do it now or forever hold your peace. Public hearing is now closed. Any comments or discussion from the uh, dais? Well, the police department needs it. I guess they're going to get it. All right, Mr. Clerk, roll call. Council Roman Keys? Yes. Council Bienemu? Yes. Council Roman Stereo? Yes. Mayor Joseph? Siempre. <laughs> Councilman Galvin? Yes. Passes 5 to 0. Next, Tab K. Proposed resolutions of the Mayor and Council of the City of North Miami, Florida authorizing the city manager to execute a fourth amendment of the agreements between the city of North Miami and American Traffic Solutions, Inc., and substantially the attached form, provided for an effective date and all other purposes. Thank you very much. Public hearing is open on tab K. Public hearing is still open. William Prevatel, 11950 North Bayshore Drive. I thought there might be a presentation on this, um, but without the presentation still, I am supportive of Chief Burgess, um, that there is a concern for safety and the system seems to be facilitating a safer environment for our citizens. I believe there's a little bit of a revenue stream coming off of that. And in light of that, the fact that we already have this system in place and it really is uh, an expansion or continuation of that, um, there might be the consideration in going ahead to possibly renegotiate this. Uh, if I understand the system properly, it's that it's a camera system in, in place. Most of the infrastructure is in place, and it um, does not require a lot of manpower to maintain. However, it is our police department that does the enforcement of this, that has to put in all the hours to review the various uh, uh, photographs and, and situations. Uh, in light of that, uh, since there is competition out there and since this is something in place, um, rather than giving more of a windfall profit, it would be nice if we could renegotiate this, continue it, supplement it if need be, and also renegotiate. Thank you for, co thank you for consideration supporting this measure. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, thank you for the early introduction, council members. Ever since 
my spinal cord injury in 1985. I've dedicated my life to one thing and one thing only. Is it okay? Ever since my injury in 1985, I've dedica my dedicated my life to trying to get people out of wheelchairs and preventing them from ever getting into wheelchairs. And I have to say that I've never seen a program that has been in a more direct effect of saving lives and preventing injuries than the red light camera program. I've been involved since the very beginning along with Melissa Wandell, whose husband was coming home one evening and someone ran a red light and killed a man. And she spent nearly a decade in the Florida legislature to pass the Mark Wandell bill that has turned into the red light traffic safety bill. It's an extremely important bill. We're not talking about someone getting a parking ticket. We're talking about people who run red lights and take our lives in their hands. Innocent people just trying to get home from work or going to work or about their business and someone runs a red light and either kills them or gives them tremendous serious injury. I see firsthand, because I work over at the University of Miami Jackson Memorial Hospital in the trauma center what happens when someone is T-boned by someone when someone runs a red light and those are the most serious injuries that occur. Since the program has been installed, there has been less injuries, less fatalities, and less spinal cord injuries coming into the trauma center as a result of this program. This is a tremendous program. I truly hope you support this, because not only does it save lives, but the Miami Project, which I've dedicated my life to, receives three dollars from every citation. And the trauma centers, including the Ryder Trauma Center, also receive funds from the citation. The Miami Project is creating medical murals, miracles with that money and changing lives all around the world. And the Ryder Trauma Center, which we all know, is a saving <coughs> grace to many of our citizens who unfortunately have to go to the trauma center for serious injury. Thank God that we have a center like the Ryder Trauma Center to protect our citizens. They need the funding by supporting this red light camera. Ladies and gentlemen, in the end, this is a tremendous opportunity for all of you to do the right thing and to save lives. I've seen it firsthand, and I know by supporting this extremely important red light initiative, we'll continue to save lives and keep the citizens of Miami-Dade County and the city of North Miami safer and the ability to be more protected. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I believe our chief has a short presentation as well. No? ATS will go first and then the chief. Orlando Torres. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Orlando Torres, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. My name is Orlando Torres, and I'm a Senior Account Manager with American Traffic Solutions. Tonight, I want to just uh, quickly go over some information, but I want to share a good story in North Miami. And the good story in North Miami is, and, and Mark already talked a little bit about that, was uh, what is the Mark Wandahl Act? Now, I just want to touch briefly on that. So it's been over 11 years since Melissa Wandahl lost her husband to a red light camera accident and she was actually, while well, she was nine months pregnant. Uh, a daughter that would never meet her loving father, and it was really just a traffic confirmation, if you will, or a testament of how red light cameras truly, uh, truly provide, or truly creates injuries and does kill people. Sally, the stage's practice still continues. Uh, the efforts to change the driver behavior, which you've been doing for a few years now, will be continued and will be ongoing. In 2013, uh, there were over 4,800 injuries from red light running uh, accidents just in Florida. Over the past five years in Florida, there have been 345 fatalities 
making Florida the third highest for fatalities in red light cameras. A Highway Safety Administration survey also showed that over the last 10 years, there have been over 9,000 fatalities due to red light running accidents or intersection sideswipes that, that occur. As you see probably in some of the videos that are, that are playing in the background there, uh, the accidents that happen, the life that you could be saving by changing the way people drive could be your own life, could be someone that you love. Because Many of the times these people that are in these accidents that do run the red lights, they're the ones themselves that get injured or someone that they truly love. The U.S. Department of Transportation, there was another study that was released that shows that where there were red light cameras, the driving behavior of the red light cameras improved the obeyance of all traffic laws, not just where there were red light cameras. It also improved or reduced the dangers of pedestrians, people walking down your streets. As you can imagine, pedestrians are 10 times more likely to die in these types of accidents, which is why the law requires us and always has to stop before we make a right-hand turn when there's a red light to protect those pedestrians. There's no doubt that the numbers would have been higher without these, this technology and without these programs. And the change of behavior, the, the, the cameras, remember, work 24-7, 365 days, and work as a force multiplier for your police department. There was a 2014 survey conducted by the Florida Office of Program Policy and Accountability. And in that survey, what they found is that they estimated that through the red light camera programs, over 18 lives had been saved and 68 accidents had been avoided. So that's a tremendous thing to look at, 18 lives saved when we're talking about something as important as that, which is why these programs are in place, even if we save the one life. I do want to briefly touch on the fines that are involved and what the funds are and how they're used, and it was already briefly touched on by Mr. Bonacani. Uh, there's a $158 fine if someone violates the red light camera uh, uh, laws. But those fines go beyond, and it was mentioned briefly here, go beyond just the fines themselves. And I want to share that with you because it's an important thing that usually doesn't get discussed. Since the Mark Wand Dahl Act in July of 2010, over $6.8 million have gone to the Miami to Project to Cure Paralysis, right here in Miami. You heard uh, someone that is, is dedicated his whole life to that and what he's seen and what this program has done for them. Additionally, $22 million have gone to local trauma center, level one trauma centers around the state of Florida. We have Jackson Memorial here in Miami-Dade County. So beyond the $150 fine, there's, there's monies that are going in their own communities and hel helping to change things. So I want to talk briefly about North Miami and the good that you've done and the good story you've got to tell. So the program began in July of 2009. To date, there are 21 cameras at 11 intersections. The violations since the inception of that program in July 20, 2009 have gone down 70%. There's no truer indicator of changing a driver behavior except seeing this across the state, not just here in North Miami, but seeing that the behavior has gone to where there's 70 percent less violations, and it's a fairly close number to the rest of the state. People have changed the way they drive. Of those violations issued since inception, 24 percent have been to citizens of North Miami. But a more important number is 76 percent have been to motorists driving through your city to and from work or whatever they might be doing, or for violators that live outside of your city. You there are providing a, a system, a program, protecting your citizens, your streets, your pedestrians. The, the statistics in North Miami show that uh, only 18% of the people that ever get a violation from North Miami get a second violation. Once again, an indicator, a strong indicator that people change the way that they drive. The most common thing I hear about it is, yeah, I got one of those, I didn't like it, you're never going to get me again. That's a program that changes behavior, and it's something that really has shown and proven in North Miami throughout the state. In 2014, similar to previous years, the city of North Miami only, uh, only issued 35% of all the violations that were actually captured by the cameras. And it's important to mention only because you get a lot of calls about, well, the, the trigger, I got one. There's a lot of violations that might be captured in the system that goes to the police department. The police department makes a decision if that is a violation or not. And the numbers traditionally have shown for you that only 35% only of everything that's captured after it's reviewed by the office is actually issued. So it's not every snap of the camera that goes off, it's what is a violation as deemed by the safety professionals in your city. There's some other benefits to the police. Police have requested videos of these cameras uh, over 140 times. They've used them for investigations, accident investigations, many crime investigations. We've had examples throughout South Florida uh, where we have, um, uh, we've had criminals that have been caught thanks to these cameras. You're participating in these programs with another 22 
uh, municipalities just in Miami-Dade County. So it's a good thing that has worked well. And really one last thing I'll leave you on, on the benefits is it turns into a force multiplier for the police chief and his staff. It has cameras up, uh, has eyes looking at the safety of the city 365 and something that the officers can review and go back to as needed. So I'll leave you with this. You have a good story to tell here, and I, and I wanted to make sure that I shared it with everyone. You've accomplished the goal of changing behavior to improve safety. So I ask that you continue to change that behavior as it's an ongoing process and allow us to work with you and the technology that's provided to continue doing that. And I'll answer questions after the chief has concluded. Thank you. Chief. Orlando Torres. He covered 80% of my presentation. <laughs> Get all the statistics very accurate, and I appreciate it. But I'll say a little. In fact, um, I was going to talk. As you see some of the crashes on the video, as you hear from some of the people that are here today, um, as you feel some of the passion, and, and imagine some of those if it was your children or if it was other citizens in the sense of the kids, uh, the elderly that walks our streets. But I'm looking at some of those videos, and it could be me. It could be any one of my officers. And so it is a deterrent, not just for the citizen, but also for the police officer. And think about who in this city, North Miami, drives a vehicle more often, 24 7, seven days a week in this city. It's that officer that has a high mileage. And we had some crashes in some of those, in some of those intersections, wh whether with the red light camera or not. But I want to make a little personal aspect of it. And uh, about you, Orlando Torres, I mean, I know we've been involved with a lot of ongoing discussions back and forth, not just recently, but even in the past. And I just want to give admiration to you in a sense. It's not just the program itself, and not just a red light camera. It's not just the aspect as well of the revenues that come from it, but I like your commitment that you commit to our city. And like I said, there have been several pilot events that ATS has funded. I appreciate the effort you did by putting our annual reports together. And then even our recent gala of, of, of the purchasing, considering the benefits come to the PAL program, and even our FACT Festival. So I like not just you, but I'm saying other vendors, when you talk about commitment to the program, we're talking about commitment to the city. And I truly appreciate you at, with having that passion. But we have the same passion as well. I think everybody here from the council, as well as from the mayor, and from every citizen throughout North Miami. And my biggest concern really is if we don't have the cameras. That's my biggest fear, if we don't have the cameras. I'm aware of that camera there, particularly uh, there's, a, as you mentioned, 11 intersection, 21 cameras. And they're in the main ones, I mean, pr predominantly on Northeast 6th Avenue, in the middle of the city, predominantly three on Biscayne Boulevard, on the east side of the city. And then we have uh, the other, the remaining seven on the west side of the city, on S 7th Avenue, 6th Avenue, Overlocker Boulevard, 135. And the reason why I mention that, because it's each in one of the different districts of the council persons. And I want to make sure that if there's any decision that's going to be made about us adding cameras or deleting cameras, I can want to make sure that it's run by the council, that they have that decision before we make any changes in a contract or renewals, adding cameras or deleting. I know that's something that occurred maybe four or five years ago when a contract was created. But we're going to move forward. I, I, I remember that word being mentioned many times by the leadership of the city about moving forward. And we have technology in place. So now for us, perhaps not to use that technology I think we're maybe going in the wrong direction. If that technology is not in place, I can't guarantee the citizens to have an officer at one of those main intersections 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'll be pulling resources from other areas, other areas in a sense that we could do some more high visibility and some more proactive efforts along the way. And you didn't mention about 140. I think that's about the only piece I'm missing. I think it's 152 requests we made <laughs> for the uh, ATS red light cameras. And 65 of those were for investigations. When a robbery occurs or a burglar occurs, particularly out of our tour system chief, but predominantly at our investigative section, Larry Jurega and his crew, that's where we go to. We make that request. And if that's house or that residence, we try to find out what route they took. And then we could pull up a couple of cameras, particularly if it's uh, uh, burglaries or robberies that are occurring in the morning, let's say from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. There's not too many cars out there, but we got cameras out there, whether it's on the east side, middle town, or the west side of town. And that really allows us to get some tag information. Uh, we've been uh, very fortunate. I think we had about, um, we requested about dealing with four homicides and about four shooting scenes where we actually captured everything, particularly it was the one on 135 Street in Northwest Sixth Court 
where we had two or three vehicles that had about 40 uh, caliber casings that were there on that scene. So um, it's been beneficial to us, but myself as chief of police, I think I am responsible for the safety of the community and our staff and the men and women that works there. So this is just another tool I think that's very beneficial. I know the decision will be made. Um, if it's something that doesn't go forward, I know it's going to be very challenging. I know I'll be bugging my city manager <laughs> for some more resources, um, some more uh, to increase the high visibility. But then I must say this, if there's two significant amount of complaints that do come from constituents of North Miami, one is speeding. And I could tell you, if it's a speeding problem, and this is one of the, uh, let's say 131 Street, right up this avenue, I could pick up a phone, I could talk to one of the commanders in the majors, and we'll get motorcycle unit out there and we'll get some uniform patrol and we'll get the message board and we will go ahead and make sure we reduce the amount of speeders that's on that roadway. And it may be another roadway and it may be another roadway. But the second complaint are crashes. That's the second complaint. And like I said, to put the amount of officers and resources and move them to a intersection to deal with crashes, once again, it's just, it really takes its toll when we're trying to control and maintain some of the more violent crimes in a city. And I don't want to really pull those resources, but I know that'll be a challenge. There's always challenges when there's changes. And we're ready to, feel, uh, ready to face those challenges. But I do want to say I am supportive of it. And more importantly, if it's something, like I said, that is uh, mentioned, I'd like to open it up for any questions. I know there's other issues besides the, uh, um, the cameras in place, but more importantly, our focus is about the safety of this community and our police department <coughs> and the kids and children. Public hearing still open. Thank you very much, uh, Chief, for the good presentation. The public hearing still open? Yes. Right, thanks. This is Mar my name is Marie Samuel, and I live at 12725 Northeast 12th Avenue. And um, you went so fast about where you're going to put these lights, but my main concern is obviously Northeast 12th Avenue between 125th Street and 135th Street and, and West Dixie Highway. My question is are you going to put, I don't know who to ask this to, but are there going to be any lights on West Dixie Highway? that are in our area. We already established the locations. We can always answer, answer at the end. Finish all the public hearing. Just take we'll note. Answer. I'm sorry, did, did you answer it? No. <laughs> They're going oh, okay. to answer all the questions at the okay. end. Yeah. Okay, well then I just wanted to say something else. This letter that, that uh, Mr. Galvin asked me to give you a copy of wasn't what I'm here for, but part of it has to do with the uh, cameras because um, the way I understand it, you, the city is trying to do speed calming devices on Northeast 12th Avenue and other roads. And I'd like to say that before you do that, we could talk about this part of my letter, but the main thing is um, talking about this, the, the, the cameras, that would be something that we should think about before we put money into the speed calming devices. And I've lived on that road for 40 years. I've only been driving since 85. I'm 72 years old now, and I walk very slow. Every day I walk slower and slower, and the cars come faster and faster. <laughs> and they come from north and south, and I can't beat them. <laughs> Between me and my dog, it's very hard to cross my street in my block from 127th to 128th. And I don't ride a bike anymore. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Samuel. <laughs> Who's next? Yes, uh, <coughs> you can hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, my name is, is uh, Silvia Maiolo. And I want to appreciate, uh, I, I valorate the labor of the police, no doubt. They help us a lot, North Miami police. And about the cameras, I believe it's important 
But the most important is wha uh, what is behind these cameras, who own these companies. If there are private companies, <laughs> we don't need that. Because uh, the community getting lower and lower in a lot of things, then we need, if we support the cameras, we want the community, the North Miami police, just take the money we pay, not those companies who own the, the, the cameras, and we pay maybe uh, 150, and they donate $5 or $10 <laughs> of that. <laughs> course, course are millions of dollars because there are millions of tickets. Yeah. Then it's time that the, we help each other. It's better to raise the salaries to the police to protect us because they risk their life and to own those companies who protect and help the police. It's, it's all that when I want to say. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Jacques Despinos, 95 Nordis 131 Street. Red light camera that's been an issue here in North Miami from past election is going to remain so. Promise, 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 they're going to remove it. Most of the uh, council men, women, campaign for it in the community, say we go and remove them after election. Some promise to say they will be removed on day one. Those cameras still there. If you read article and article coming from the state, only Florida Police Department and law enforcement are responsible to write a, a citation on red light. Okay, I hope we check with other city or the municipality and state, we will see the result. I trust my police officer. They are doing a good job. More safety, hire more police. We have the money, hire more police. But those camera, sometimes you pass the light, then you can see the camera flash. And if that was a human being, a police officer, you will not get a ticket because you can see the circumstance of why this is happening. And that's from the court. Again, only police officer and law enforcement are responsible. This machine is a money-making machine, okay? And people, we're going to have some noise in this community. We're going to watch it and you're going to vote for it. My name is Balkis Zarati, and I don't have any horrific video to show you, but um, I did listen to the presentation, and it sounds like uh, if we continue to have these red light cameras, we're not going to have any more accidents because there are 70% less violations. There are 70% less violations, and we continue that downward trend how are we going to be able to provide for the contract that the city is going to enter into? I don't understand. There has to be some kind of loss at some point here. But regardless of that, um, I just want us to be given a little bit more information about this agreement and not just base it on videos, not just base it on donations as much as they are needed because everyone here, we've seen the sticker, if you get in a car accident, you wanna be taken to Ryder Trauma Center. Take me there too, please. But let's not base this on uh, fear. Let's base this on the taxes that we pay throughout the city. Thank you. Yeah, public hearing is still open. 
Anyone who wishes to be heard, please do it now. My name is Kathy Hubbard, and I'm in agreement with the young ladies about the contracts and what they mean. My question is to police officers, and I heard the one speak and say they're, they're an asset and all of this, but when you've got human beings that need a job and they need a raise, and then you put a camera and say, well, we need less officers now because we've got these cameras, and I understand, but it's like, how is that helping? Are we getting revenues to help raise the police officers' salaries? There are human beings putting their lives at jeopardy every day, 24-7. And like the other gentleman spoke, um, they're human. They can see some things that a camera won't pick up. They can look at something and assess it and say, oh, no, that doesn't validate a ticket, but this one does. And there were accidents. There will be accidents. It's not going to stop people from drinking, partying, and doing stupid stuff at 2 in the morning. So that's my comment. And I wonder from the police <laughs> officers, when you love a raise, I think you always deserve a raise. And you do great job. Thank you. Carol Prager, 2509 Northeast 135th Street. Um, I've lived here a really long time, some 50 plus years. There are neighboring municipalities who do not have red light cameras. And I know full well not to speed in those municipalities. Biscayne Park is one of them, and Miami Shores is one of them. Uh, and uh, you know they, they seem to get it done without cameras as well. And I would assume that these cars are traveling through not just my city, but they're there's municipalities as well. It's the, they don't come to us and then all of a sudden, you know, teleport to the next spot. So they're driving through those municipalities as well, um, and they're not speeding there, and there are no cameras. So that's something to consider as well. And um, I'm always pro-police. Anything that could help them, I'm um, for. So I guess it's a debate you have to have. Um, and I wish you luck with it, but I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Susan Freed. I am with the ATS people. I wanted to point out to some of the folks uh, with all good intentions, sorry about my voice, that spoke here tonight. <coughs> the largest cities in Dade County do have the cameras. The cities of El Portal, Biscayne Park, that I love dearly because I live up in this area, are very small and they don't have a whole bunch of intersections where they'd be a major problem. It's the cities like Aventura, North Miami, North Miami Beach. Um, why am I blanking? Miami Beach, those cities are large and have many intersections as you all do. I think it's <coughs> also misunderstood that this is funded by ATS. Your city did not fund this. We put in the technology. You know, I'm probably the oldest person in this room right now. I'm looking around and I'm pretty sure that's correct. And I can tell you, is, is that my pacemaker? <laughs> I don't have <laughs> my. <laughs> or is that a hint? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Doctor, Doctor Joseph, I may need you. You got to watch me here. <laughs> uh, I'm a mayor here, not a doctor. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day. Um, I know how people in, in certain age groups can get frightened of technology, but I've learned to bless it, maybe because I have two grandchildren that I could not talk to unless I understood what was going on in their life. This technology is so advanced and continually gets more advanced, and I can tell you, I've lived in North Dade for over 50 years in North Miami Beach, and my behavior has changed in those cities, and I admit this openly, where there are cameras. I don't even know where the cameras are because when I'm driving, I'm paying attention to what's straight ahead. But nevertheless, I know in Aventura, I watch myself. In your city, I watch myself. In North Miami Beach, etc. I hope I do that everywhere, frankly. But I know that behaviors are changed by a series of habits that you form and continue to change. And God bless the police uh, in North Miami. 
Uh, you're not gonna stand a police officer on the street for 24 hours a day at these intersections, summer, winter, fall, and spring. That's just not gonna happen. And the truth is the naked eye, as much as we don't want to admit it, is not nearly as good as this technology. And as attested to by the police, they look at every single ticket. 70% of them, I think, um, Chief, you said, some of them get, many of them get thrown out because they're just, they don't meet, th meet the standard. So it's not that every time a click happens, something is affected. And I remember you from 20 years ago, you're still a ticking girl, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, I'm sorry I took all this time, but I do thank you for the opportunity. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Public hearing still open for five seconds. Public hearing is now closed. This, uh, Mr. Manager, this uh, contract that we have with ATS, yes. is it still in effect or is it, uh, yes. um, has it? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, the, the contract that we we have with ATS was signed in March 25th, 2008. An extension was done in July of this, of last year, which is July of 2014 for a six month period. Um, at present, th the reason why it's on the agenda, uh, the, the six month period will terminate on January 23rd. The next city council meeting would be on January 27th. So presently, if we go on a month to month, it's over a hundred thousand dollars, and under the city ordinance, I am not allowed to approve anything over a hundred thousand. What is the structure of our contract? <coughs> Presently, what happened in two thousand and eight? Sorry, what happened in two thousand and eight? The city entered into an agreement with American Traffic Solutions to install eleven cameras. I believe it's eleven initially at their cost. They, they brought in all the equipment and installation. Uh, the city was actually sharing in the overall, actually sharing in the, um, in the cost of what was after the county was paid and after all the administrative charges were paid. You, you said they brought in the equipment, including the cameras and whatever yes. accessories it may need. Everything was brought in and ins permitted and installed by ATS. But who owns those those, uh, those equipment? Um, under the agreement, some of those are owned after a five-year period. It depends on the location. Since we have 21 locations, depending on- Do the equipment belong to ATS or to the city of North Miami? It, it belongs to ATS. They belong to ATS? Correct. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the equipment belongs to ATS. So what the manager was explaining is, in the initial onset, as we do with all the clients, in order to give you an opportunity to start the program, we basically put up front all the capital to, to build the sites. Yeah. Uh, the, the initial investment here has been almost $3 million that we just put up front, and then we collect that through the monthly fees over a period of time. We amortize it over a certain amount of years. Uh, the equipment is- what, what do you mean by monthly fees? Monthly fees uh, from the city? You mean Sorry? the city pays you a monthly fee? Yeah, through For the invoice, what? through the through the uh, invoicing process that that uh, the manager was talking about. So what we do is we go ahead and provide that capital up front so that the programs can be started. And there's no out of pocket from the city. In other words, you got to remember that the programs are funded, as it's been in your case. I'm I'm just trying to understand. No, you that's no, no, no. Wait a minute. You just told me that the equipment is provided by your company. Yes, sir. And you provide you provide the upfront capital for you know for all that to be done. Correct. But yet the city has to start paying you on a monthly basis for those equipment. That is correct. That's the recovery of no, the it initial no, investment for the equipment. Up front. That's right. So the so the equipment that we we are buying them. Well, the way that the contract the way that the contract. Uh, and, and I understand this is a, a very emotional mm. topic for a lot of folks, but I'll explain it and. The equipment is leased out as, as we do for a lot of different things. And That's the word I wanted to and get. And I mean, it's leased out. So they are not your, right. we are leasing them. Basically, you're listing the equipment. And everything that's behind it, which is the, 
the regular maintenance that goes on and the regular upgrades that goes to the equipment. The back office cost is really the lingering cost that happens. So remember what we're doing is we're, you, you, the officers, your officers, do the actual reviews. They determine what a violation is. They are the ones that decide to issue a violation. And then we support the back office operations by providing the mailing services, tracking service technology to track that information. But it's your officers that make that decision. We provide all the back office and support technology behind it. And so what we do so that there's not an initial capital investment from you that you've got to come up with X amount of dollars for a safety program, we go ahead and put that investment up front and then we recover that over the years uh, as, as we do in the monthly uh, contracts. So the, the reason why I asked the question, I, mean, I, I would think if we were to enter into such agreement with a company bringing in the equipment and you are uh, capitalizing from the revenue, why is the city in the business of either leasing or purchasing those equipment? To me, it would make more sense if you were to bring the equipment on your own, be responsible for them, maintain them, and then all the city would have to do is, would be to just charge you a permit fee. A, 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 a permit fee for using the city streets. Well, remember, this but is not the other way around. Well, I mean, I'm, may, maybe I'm, I'm getting it wrong. I don't know. I so, so you got to remember that this is a program for North Miami. This is a program that North Miami wa made a strong decision to make their safe their streets safer, and it's a city program to make your citizens, your residents safer and everyone that comes into the city. So while I understand where you're coming from, I'm not sure that you're looking at the agreement, you know, in the proper light. Mm -hmm. But I understand what you're saying. Now, we come in and we provide the technology and all the services that go with that. Mm -hmm. And that way you have nothing to do other than basically collect the revenue that comes from people that violate the red light cameras and hopefully change that behavior and save some lives. But it's, it's a North Miami project. It's a North Miami effort, a great effort. And ATS is just a provider to, to, to be able to do that. So the agreements all across the state and the other 20 plus municipalities in Miami-Dade County and the eight in Broward County are set up the same way. And the idea was to allow you to not have a large upfront investment, but you could start your safety program right away and take advantage of it. And that's how the contract is set. And over the years we've, and, and in this particular discussion, the new agreement has some additional concessions to try to make the contract even better and more agreeable to the city. And that's based on discussions we've had over the past few months from the uh, city manager and administrative team to try to improve that current contract. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm all for, for safety and uh, the police department knows that from the uh, get go. I always uh, express you know, my uh, collaboration and support with the police de department in an effort to ensure safety and uh, de in a bit crime in our community. And it's uh, the only question that I had is about the equipment, you know, how the deal yes, was sir. made. Yes. And uh, these have to be looked at. If we were to uh, be engaged in any future a, uh, a, a agreement, I would like to see uh, that uh, uh, looked at. The who else? I'd, I'd like to say no. um, I number one, I'm not very emotional. I'm pretty cold up here, but I was really moved by Mr. Bonacati. Thank you for coming to speak to us. Very moving and um, really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, that being said, I am a very much in favor of red light cameras. Um, they've changed my driving habits. I do not drive through a red light without the idea that there is a camera up there. And I think they've changed the habits and the safety of our city. Um, coincidentally, I got an email today from Efficient Government, which is an organization that sends us daily emails. And it just came up. And they, it was a story on Houston that they recently reported a drastic um, increase in both traffic collisions and fatalities when they removed the red light safety cameras. According, I'm just going to read one paragraph. According to Houston Police Department data, fatal traffic collisions increased 30 percent 
at 51 dangerous intersections where the red light cameras were removed, and the total crashes jumped 117 percent. This is after they took away the cameras. Um, throughout other cities, there's, there's more statistics, but in um, Garland, was it in Virginia Beach, reported a 11.3 percent increase in red light events. Uh, when when the cameras are removed, our fatalities, our crashes are going to go up. I think removing our cameras from our streets is going to give people <coughs> the green light to run the red lights. Um, I don't know why we would want to make our streets more dangerous. Seventy-six percent of the people who get the tickets in our city are not even our residents. So why should we allow people to race? And it's not all about speed. It's just about not obeying the traffic lights. Why should we allow 76 percent of the people from all over the state, county, and other cities zip through, not obey our traffic laws, and get away with it? I don't do that. Like you said, in Biscayne Park, I don't speed. It has nothing to do with that, but I know what the traffic issues are there. I don't run anything. You don't make a right on red any, you know, in Aventura. You know to behave. People know if they're going through North Miami to obey the laws. Um, <coughs> if you don't want to get a ticket, then don't break the law. It's as simple as that. I got my ticket in Aventura, I paid it, and I'm really careful. So I, I think making our streets, are making, taking this away, not uh, renewing this, would make it a lot more um, dangerous for our citizens. And I really think our officers, our police officers, have a lot better things to do than sitting around watching cameras. That's <coughs> where they can go. I would like to see our police officers checking on the speeders. And you can't check speeders if you're sitting at a light. You've got to be moving. We do not need them sitting at every light watching the speeders. So I'm very much in favor. And it's not about money, but the icing on the cake is we do, the way our um, contract is structured, we do get about a million dollars in our city. So if we eliminate these this evening, then we're going to have to look for about an $800,000 shortfall. And again, it's not about money. It's about safety. And taking away our cameras is just risking the lives of our citizens. Councilman Galvin. Thank you. There, <coughs> I believe there are, <coughs> there have recently been bills in Tallahassee to eliminate red light cameras to make them illegal. If those bills pass in the next legislative session, how is this contract affected? Is the city on the hook if for powers outside of our own shuts down red light cameras being le legal? No, sir. If I may, and, and I certainly will defer to your city attorney, but the way the contract is structured and most of the contracts, if not all, are the same way is if the law were to change in Tallahassee drastically to where you can no longer enforce or issue uh, red light camera ticket citations, then there's an out clause, a termination clause in one of your sections, section six, section seven, one of those that, that clearly explains that that's what would happen. We would, try to re we would try to remedy that within a certain period of time, but if it's not, then you have an out clause, as do most every contract in Florida. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Manager, yes. currently there are 11 intersections with cameras. 21, yes. 11 intersections with 21 cameras. Do you plan to expand that at any time? If so, when and by how much during the life of this contract? Um, I, I don't plan on extending it, extending the contract, but what what I'm planning to do is the intersections that there are cameras at present where the number of um, the number of accidents or infractions at these intersections have reduced due to driver awareness those cameras will be moved to areas of higher volume again the police department is using it as a safety measure so what I'm doing areas of low volume or low volume of traffic, I'm moving it to areas of higher volume. <coughs> <coughs> Madam City Attorney, can we add language, and Mr. Gomez, can we add language that says at no time during the life of this contract will there be more than 11 intersections with cameras? 
we can, well, we currently have 15, 21, 21 so we would have to. 21 uh, cameras uh, at 11 intersections. 21 so I know cameras. that some of the intersections have two cameras. I mean, that's I get right. the math. Yeah, that's correct. But can we, if we're going to move, if we're going to shut down at one intersection to move them to another intersection, can we freeze it right at the number where we are? Can we sure, add language that says at no time during the three years of this contract will we have more than 11 intersections with cameras? Yeah, that's yeah. up to us. That's yeah. that's completely up to I the city. Program, so, so it's our program. Okay. The, camera, the cameras we have right now is fixed. We can right. move them to other locations as long as the number remains the same. Right, but I don't want to go. I don't want to go higher. That's no. what I want. We are not increasing the cameras. We are relocating the cameras. So can needed. we can we add language if the council is amenable to that? Can sure. we add language that says at no point will there Madam be Attorney. more than eleven intersections with cameras? Mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. Okay. Now let's talk about where the money goes. Yeah, but yeah, but there may be there there may be unforeseeable uh, uh, factors that that may require you ask you know adding one or two more lights. Yeah, I mean, sure. why don't you just leave that up to us? I mean, I it's not up to ATS. Well, no? Here's what I do here's what happened in the past. I voted for this the first time five years or so ago, and it was only like four or five cameras at the that time. Five, that's correct. Staff then administratively made the decision to up that number from five to the current 21 and never ran that by council, never asked council, never showed us any facts or figures. It was, it was a cash-making cow. Basically, we had budget shortfalls, and, and what we started to realize was, wait, we could make lots of money off of these red light cameras. Let's throw them up everywhere, and bang, bang, bang. Yeah, we're up to the point where we're making millions of dollars a year off red light cameras. I'm not comfortable with that. I support your amendment, uh, sir. So, so what I'd like to say is 11 intersections only. I'm, I'm meeting you halfway. I'm compromising, because sure. what I wanted to do was gut this bad boy, throw it out, and say never, no more. But... I hear I hear people like Mr. Bonacani. I hear people like Mr. Bonacani make very valid points, and I see some videos that make some very right. valid points. My chief of police says he wants these, so I'm willing to meet everybody halfway, sure. as long as we're going to just sort of stick where we are and not continue to expand this program infinitum to make sure. money. And and just one point: all the videos that you saw here are videos that were taken at North Miami intersection, except for one, oh, the, pedest except for the pedestrian that got knocked down. <laughs> so all of those yeah. were actually North Miami intersection yeah. that you saw. Yeah, in the I, I recognize them. Yeah. One's <coughs> right by my office. And I told, I, yeah. I did tell ATS to do that, so you could see, you know, the severity of the problem that we have in, in speeding and running some of these intersections. Yeah. So, right. so you, you, you had me there. I'm, I'm coming okay. halfway for this, yes. but I just want us to freeze it at 11. Okay. If there's some extraordinary circumstance, maybe we revisit that point sure. at that time. Sure. But I just want, I would like the message to be, this sure. is just me speaking now, I don't know what the rest of the council feels, the message is it is, it is what it is, and we're no longer going to just throw up cameras every other right. intersection so that everybody's if getting tickets. Councilman, if you want to keep it, we'll keep it fixed at 21 cameras. The only leeway I would request is if I want to relocate a camera from one intersection to another, that's the only leeway I'm requesting. And I'm cool with that. That's why I said 11, yes. 11 intersections. At any point of time. Thank the you. Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And another thing that I would like to add, at the beginning when we had the, uh, the camera uh, on any poles, we usually post um, the signage. The signage. Correct. So make sure that there is no surprise so. um, to the people. What happened to the camera that we have, the, the right turn? We don't have that anymore. Right turn the right, right on red. The right, right on red. I will ask the attorney to address the right on red. We still have it. That's where I took my first ticket. <laughs> and I paid. My yes, you yeah, still my have wife to got stop. You, you always no, 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 no. Yeah, we you, still have you the camera. Stop, but we you can turn. We yeah, we the right, right, right. Red. Red. No, I, 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 yes. I learned my lesson, so. Right. Yeah, so yeah. we still. So you still and have again, to as stop the chief of police you. said, yeah, you do have to stop. I'm sorry. Uh, you do have to stop, but the program is meant for driver awareness. And if you are aware of an intersection and it will reduce or may make it a safer intersection, I think the program has worked. But uh, another thing that I would like to add, I'm asking the chief if this passed tonight to mm -hmm. please find a way either through workshop or through the radio to actually uh, educate the people because maybe some people don't understand that if you take a, a red light a camera, if you take a ticket, you can actually appeal it. Yes. And I know there was a time that I took, I didn't, uh, I didn't understand about the, the right turn. One of my kids actually had a, a ticket on the, right turn when we had it by FIU, they did just like turn. 
So I was very upset about $158 just for the right uh -huh. turn. Right. So I had to come, and unfortunately, they had to show me the lie where he was, like, turning. And I said, ouch. But I paid it. So if people understand that, although that is not a, a, a human being, but the camera is live, if you don't feel comfortable about the tickets, please come to the police department. They will show it to you. And sometime, as the chief said, even though you see it is flash, that doesn't mean that they actually issued the tickets. Correct. So they will correct. make sense out of it, look at it to see, okay, no, you did not um, uh, pass the red lights, or right. you were so close you could not stop in the middle of it, and then they just, what, right. uh, yeah, waved the tickets. Right. So something like that. I was right. happy to actually the physically right. see it, but I still... Right. The flash or snapshot doesn't Same. mean you get the ticket. We still have yeah. the officers reviewing every one of those. So and it's not automatically sent to you. It's not automatically it's sent to, the police to you. Department. They right. review it, it is reviewed by ATS staff. It is reviewed by, by, the police by our police department before a citation is issued. There is, there is a question, like for the straight red light, yes. there is a question of front wheels and rear wheels, right? If, if, if the two front wheels have already crossed the, the line. The stop bar. The and, yeah. and the rear wheels have not you know, you know, crossed the line yet, that's when you get the e Well, I'll let the ATS staff. You still can appeal it. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, the, the, the <coughs> determination on that violation comes from the police department. So I, I w and the reason I say that is it's what is it? Is, is it two wheels or, or, well, or it, four it, wheels? The reason I say it's different in different cities, and there's different that they no, decide for us, differently. for us. And oh. that's what I'll defer because I. That's really a, uh, ultimately it's important to know that the violation is captured. The police department sees it. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that decide. And to be fair to them, they do a great job of erroring on the side of the motorist yeah. when it's really close. They don't even issue. It. And the mm -hmm. ones that and, and the great thing about this, while we're talking about just in the spirit of education. The difference here is that you've got basically technology that allows you to have a say that whether you ran that light or not. Most often, if you have get pulled over on the street by an officer, it's your word against that officer. There is nothing to look at. This technology offers you the opportunity to be at your house, computer, wherever, or at the police station. Pull it up. They'll show you the violation picture, why they think it's a violation, and they'll show you the video that really will say if it was a violation or not. So it's really enhanced from the he said, she said you might have on the street with an officer. So right. having said that, the decision is usually it's when the it, when the front wheel crosses that stop bar. <laughs> it's some some cities it's when all wheels cross the stop bar. It, mm -hmm. it varies on what that city's business rules are and I don't know exactly what they are mm -hmm. in North Miami. And it depends on the police department or the officer who is reviewing. Correct. The chief, the chief will answer to it, It's the front wheel o over the uh, white cross bar line. Right. And I also want to mention, um, I, I think it's a great idea. I, I you got our commitment, city manager, uh, the council, the mayor, on two things. Public awareness. Educating the public is, is just as important, vital, critical as this program. Just imagine that. Um, if the public did it, if we didn't have these many citations, these many violations, because people are quite aware when you come to the city of North Miami and they're aware about the right turn on the right and, and running and, and crossing and, and it, even it was mentioned about the 13 miles per hour. I mean, there's a little thing there where people don't realize that when you make that right turn on a red light, if you're over that 13 miles per hour speed limit, it's going to capture that violation. But even still, <coughs> if it captures that violation, meaning the camera catches the tag and everything else, it still come back to our police department, uh, our train eyes, that not seen one, probably has seen probably, I don't know how many, 40, 50,000 citations at this point in time with an expert eye, and they still will make that determination whether it's safe and prudent for that person to make a turn or not. And I think it's either 38 or 42 percent of the citations where, no, where, where the camera captures the violation. But I think it's 38 or 42 percent of those that are not, that we do not go forward with that violation. 42. I read 42. Is it 38 or 42 percent? Where <laughs> out of the total <laughs> violations you capture, only 35 percent are ever issued by you and your team. That's what I mean. 35 percent is only issued by us. So, so still, we're talking about almost 60, 70 percent of, those of the, what the camera catches. We still make that final determination. Actually, that, that's a good number if you started thinking about it. Like I said, that's, that's where our focus is. And then just lastly, th that's, you're right, City Manager. That's not our vision to increase the cameras. Exactly. That, that is not our vision. I, I know everything's being recorded. That is not the police department vision to increase the cameras. If they're high, um, at the intersection with a high number of crashes, that's what we want to prevent. We want to prevent fatalities, we want to promote safety, and that is our focus. But right now, we feel the cameras are in a location where they need to be and probably where they need to stay. Okay. 
and that is where the high volume of traffic that goes through there. So, um, and if there is a decision made, if it's okay, then it should come through the council. I mean, these cameras are in the council person, it's in, it's in, in the mayor's, it's in their districts, and they should know if they're gonna make any changes. And I prefer that it, it is brought up at that time of moment versus us just arbitrarily changing them. So. Hey, Ma hey, Madam Attorney, if there is no alert sign that says camera, you know, traffic camera in traffic whatever, camera is ahead. Yeah. They yeah. can they argue, can someone argue not to pay it? I believe there are so there are signs, warning signs at warning. each of the intersections where. What if there is not? Can they argue not to pay it? They can argue, but it probably won't be well, successful. If, if well, mm. if I may, um, just to add a little bit, the, the statute requires that there's a sign in yes, place. That's correct. Yes. ATS actually, actually ATS provides the signs as well as part of what we do for you. If the signs are not there, they can be uh, they can be argued. I can't tell you whether those are you know dismissed right. or not, but certainly the statute says that there needs to be a sign there posted. And we addition we also have where you have right hand turns, including right hand turns. So what color are the signs? Excuse me? What color? Uh, they're white and they have uh, different colors on them and it says photo, photo enforcement. Photo enforcement, like right, yes. yes. Photo enforcement, and they are. Red, green, and y yes. And, and they're usually, depending on the logistics of the intersection, 20 to 30 feet uh, before you actually, before or maybe even further out before yeah. you get to the intersection. I do, I do want to add one thing to the opportunity for education. One of the biggest challenges that, that you face, I face, is the education of how the program works what it does, what you do when something happens. And we've taken the, through the chief's direction and the city managers, you've already taken some, some steps to improve that by creating brochures that are handed out at the police station on how it works. What do you do when you get a violation? What are your rights basically and how you can you know, argue that violation? I will also additionally offer to you, because it's part of the services that we provide for you, is we have technology and communications experts that will create a, a, a website specifically to your safety program. And it'll show exactly how the program works. It'll show what happens, what you do, who to go see, uh, how the laws apply. Would you would you be willing to get with the police department and hold town hall meetings? In sorry, in town, town hall town meetings. Town hall meetings I with the police department. Absolutely okay. yes. And and we offer that technology. We we will do all the work. We will create. We've done it for other clients. We've, we'll create the video for you. You do everything. You do yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 And, I, and and that's Mr. fine. Consumer. You know you know what? And for education, it's worth it. All right, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can speak. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, tw about 20 to 25 percent of uh, the citation. people who get a citation Excuse for the red light camera, <coughs> no, it's, it's on, are from the city of North Miami. And uh, in order for me to compromise and maybe vote uh, at another day on that issue. See if I can see the statistics about the locations where the residents of North Miami get those citations and remove them from those areas, maybe I'll consider a vote. Yeah, okay. Well, you understand? You don't want so in some locations, right. most of the tickets issued are citizens of North Miami. 24% no, of I'm the citations. But in some area, they're like 80% are residents from the okay. city of North Miami. Okay. Okay. If we remove it from those areas, yes, maybe I'll consider that. But uh, okay. uh, the way it is right now, 21 cameras at those 11 locations. And... Uh, in some area, they charge you 4,200, over 4,200 per camera. Correct. And we're losing money in some locations. That's correct. At the same time. Okay. And the way it is right now, I'm I don't think I'm, I'm going to go for it. And especially when I make the promise to the people that I will vote against the red light camera. And my position still stands. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the item uh, with, with Mr. Galvin, Councilman Galvin's um, request that we do not increase the amount of in intersections in our contract. The motion, the motion is made by Councilwoman Fall. 
to approve it? To, ap to approve the item oh, okay, and okay. with the um, provision the that uh, the contract states that we do not increase the number of intersections. We're still allowed to move the cameras from different intersections uh, but not increase the amount of intersections. Second for discussion. Might I ask a couple more questions? Who reviews the actual video of the ticket runners? Is that an, is a North Miami police officer that that is tasked with doing that? We have uh, three public service aides, and we also have three police officers. It's predominantly the public service aide because I try to get that police officer on the road instead of behind looking at the tickets. So it's predominantly the public service aides. Is that legal? That yeah. somebody who's not a police officer yeah. make the decision that tickets be given? Yes, it's legal. The majority of all the, uh, I don't know how many, maybe you could talk a little bit more on that. There's 21 municipalities now that have the same program, and predominant majority of all those are using public service aides. They take a training class and course, and if they're allowed to issue citations, they're allowed to review them as well. That was brought up, I think, even a couple of discussions when we start having our hearings as well at the, the hearings. I want to tell Regine Monacy and she could want to expound more on that. I, I'd, yeah, I'd love to hear more expounding. Uh, that I, I, my vote almost is going away right now, <laughs> honestly. No, that, has, that has not been challenged in terms of the public service aid reviewing the cameras here in Dade County. So that's, can, it is legal. Can public service aides write a ticket normally if, if let's say the public service aide is in a squad car and sees somebody speeding? Can the public service aide write a ticket outside on the street for real? So to I'm going to go to the best of my knowledge and what it is when the public service aide, they, they go to, a, they go to academy and it's a traffic safety academy and it's a step certification that they obtain to become a public service aide, which allows them to write traffic enforcements and citations and handle crashes. They, that's what they do. And that certification is there. So it's something to get specifics for counsel on that certification, we'll provide that. But, but that is one of the questions that were brought up and presented to us from other agencies that had a program. And that would allow us to use a public service aide. It's a step, step, I forgot the acronym. I think it's step certification. Yeah, I forgot the acronym, but it's a, it's a certification that they receive when they go to the academy to become a public service that allows them to issue citations, handle traffic crashes, and uh, anything with traffic enforcement. I, I think Regina's going Google. <laughs> Good. <laughs> in, in the meantime, I, I not please, after the fact, show me said kind of back up because I'm, I'm, now, I'm now even more concerned that perhaps some kid is writing tickets. No, so that I, I, I sort of need a little bit of comfort there. Um, last question, I think. <laughs> All of the money right now that we get from these, these red light tickets goes into the general fund. I think that it should stay with the police department. Um, Again, whatever the rest of council go, goes with, I think that, you know, again, in the past, the reason that we expanded the program was to get money into the general fund to cover where we were wasting money in other places. I think that we should hopefully be on more solid financial footing going forward, and we're not going to need money to make up for, oh, my God, where did I get, oh, get oh get more red light cameras. Go, go, go. Um, <laughs> So I would like to see us keep the majority of that money with the police department because obviously they're always needing new cars, they're always oh. needing new equipment, et cetera, et cetera. If it goes into the law enforcement yeah. trust fund, it's perhaps, um, but but sort of bring it back to the police department okay. for the most part. That's my thought. Those are the questions I think oh. I have. Well, can I, Councilman, can I read to you the statute with that may address your Please. issue? Okay, so it's section 316.0083 sub 1A. And it says that, uh, okay, a notice of violation, well it, it introduces the, the program. A notice of violation and a traffic citation may not be issued under the section if the driver of the vehicle came to a complete stop after crossing the stop line and before turning right if permissible at a right light but failed to stop before crossing over the stop line or other point at which a stop is required. This paragraph does not prohibit 
a review of information from a traffic infraction detector by an authorized employee or agent of the department, a county, or a municipality before issuance of the traffic citation by the traffic infraction enforcement officer. So Florida statute so says it is legal. That is correct. Okay, three thank you. 316.0083, sub A. Thank you for finding that so quickly. No, no further questions, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much. The one always comes to an intersection, not a traffic light intersection, where he has to make a uh, tough decision. And uh, these are times, I would say, the times that try our souls, because we have to make decisions that will affect people's life. And uh, in this case, we will be making decisions that will affect the city's budget. And uh, it's good uh, that ATS uh, contributes, goes back to the community and contributes uh, to good cause like the Miami Project, the writer, you know, Trauma Center, especially as a physician. Uh, I can relate to that. <coughs> uh, but the only caveat to this is, I mean, I feel like it's kind of a robbing Peter to pay Paul, kind of a Robin Hood, <laughs> you know, type of things. And because these citations that we give, of course, you know, there's a lot of people who are making, trying to make ends meet, taxi drivers, yeah. people who are working hard, and uh, sometimes it, uh, it hurts them uh, to, to pay the $158. All, although, of course, if, if it is an infraction of the law, everybody should uh, pay a, a penalty for violating the law. I do understand that. But uh, my only dilemma is that, you know, we, this, we should not really depend, the budget of the city should not really depend on this contract. And when we do that, we put ourselves in a very bad situation. Right. And uh, the, it puts me in a very awkward situation because if we make a certain amount of dollars, you know, during our fiscal year and then we take this away, then what do we do? Where, how do we make up for the money? For the and, and, and it's, it's like between a, a hard rock and a... E so we have, we have to see how it affects uh, the uh, residents, although we say it's only 20, what, 24, 26% of the total citations that are given to the residents of the city of North Miami. And uh, we just have to balance out the whole thing and, and make appeal to common sense and logic and ask God, the Holy Ghost, for guidance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sometimes we have, well, a lot of times you have to do that. So, I don't know, I need, I would like to see more, more convincing, more convincing, I would, mm, more convincing evidence. And, and I promise this, the uh, police department uh, to be there for them every step of the way as far as resources are concerned, technologies and, and so forth. And we know that this program does help us in, you know, finding other criminals you know, as well, and that helps, you know, the police the, the department in doing what they do best. But the, I'm just in a very hard position now. Can I say I something Madam contract? Can I is say it a year, oh. a year to year contract? I or think three right yeah. now we... I, I hold on, hold on a second. I think taking away yeah. our cameras yeah. is affecting the safety of our citizens, making it more dangerous. Do not break the law. Anybody who mm. really does not want these cameras is saying, I don't want these cameras because I want to not have to pay for it when I break the law. I want to be able to break the law. Can I say? But our safety is paramount. It's, it, it's not about money. It's about our safety. Yeah, but I, go ahead, go ahead. I, uh, um, I kind of um, disagree uh, with you, Councilwoman, because I took a ticket. I am one of those things that's rarely take a ticket, but I did take one because I did no, I don't have to explain myself, but I did take one, but I paid for it. But um, w right now, my concern as the mayor is that, unfortunately, we actually did something that we shouldn't be doing as city. But as a Councilman Galvin uh, said earlier, we were in a very hard impasse at a certain time where we needed the money 
to balance our budget. So I am hoping that because we have how much money? Wh what uh, eight hundred thousand dollars that we actually budget the uh, fiscal year budget with oh. that money. Yes, approximately. So um, in order for me, really, this is not something that I personally support because I know, and I'm shocked that I didn't see more of those people that have been talking about the red light camera not here tonight. I'm assuming that is because that those people are no longer taking tickets because they know about the, the, the camera somewhere out there. So my um, amendment is that if it passed tonight to make sure that it does not exceed the year because by the, by the time that September or October come, that our fiscal year started, that where we're gonna start doing the budget, I'm hoping that we can balance our budget without, I'm not saying that in a year we're gonna cut it off, but I'm hoping that if there is any reduction of the cameras that <coughs> needs to be done, that we do not, our budget do not depend on the red light camera. So when a time come where uh, the police department says, you know what, our constituent actually well aware of the, 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 the red light, the, the camera, so they no longer break the law, so we don't really need, the same way that you rotate the the camera right. that's mean that this intersection is no longer needed and i'm assuming one of these days a year from now that we no longer need those um camera but even when we don't need it we not solely depend on it so much that we have to have it in the city just to support our budget so this is a no no a no no i will support it just for the sake just the mayor says as a responsible person, um, we have a budget. We have a city just as a parent. We have kids to feed. Even if you are a physician, you are a social worker, you are a teacher, if you lose your job, you're going to do anything to feed your kids. And to me right now, we already made the mistake by um, balance our budget with the red light camera money. So we move it totally tonight. It will be um, fiscally responsible on my part to put the city on a hold just because that emotionally that I don't want to do it, which I don't. So if I support it tonight, I'm uh -huh. begging you, Mr. City Manager, Mr. Uh, budget Director, do not budget our city, balance our city budget with the red light camera. Already noted. Year. But why don't you limit it the so contract to year, September 30th? On the contract. We start we working on our budget like we're on okay, yeah, so let's we let's six, so we look six months. months. We, 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 we do the contract for just six okay, months. Okay, remember, <laughs> remember, remember, guys, we're doing it for okay. two reasons. Um, from what I understand from the police department, I'm doing it from a council member, from a someone that's actually working on the budget. I am talking about uh, being fiscally responsible. Mm -hmm. But again, I cannot override the police department who responsible for the safety of the city. I can't tell them what they need, the tools that they need to keep the city safe. Yeah. If it takes six months up here for us to support it, that's fine, but I cannot promise in six months later if the police department come before us and do another plea, this is what they need to keep the city safe, I'm hoping that the constituent can come and advocate, <coughs> and I'm hoping that the police department can actually go out there and educate our constituent the importance of the red light cameras and why they should not have it and why they should have it. And probably in six months, we have, we made no money because everybody's well aware of the red light camera and we, the accident uh, um, levels decrease. Right. Can I so say something? So I will support it for, um, with the amendment of what you said, six months? An amendment of, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say something and uh, remember that uh, the police department uh, have a budget of uh, over six million dollars, and and uh, in order to make sure our citizens are safe, we need to remember that. And secondly, we need to remember that uh, the company make more money than the city. So that's why they I'm make focusing right way now. more money than than the city. Well, it's not like the city is making all the money. So right At now the end we of the day they make we only focusing on the city. We're paying money. for the equipment and they make more money than us. Yeah. So why don't we um why so don't why don't what I'm hearing is an amendment instead of a three year extension, you want a one year extension? It no, not one year, we say six months until six. Oh. September thirtieth. 
can't enter that's the contract the for leave. six months. That's not. Okay. I mean, um, I'll ask them, I'll but. Pass. I'm not I am uh, okay, guys. I'm trying to um, find a, a l l I'm trying to help you guys to get to a good understanding. What I'm hearing, this council really do not support it because some of the council members actually promised their constituent, and you guys know when you're out there, and I know some of you ready to go out there and campaign yeah. with the red light camera, which I really. And I am one of those people, when I believe in something, election or not, I will stand by it because I'm willing to do the right things. And right now, I am doing the right things without election or not. So what's the right things is need to be done right now is to be, I hope, when, if any one of you up here, you can be fiscally, you can understand the city budget, knowing that you have a responsibility to move the city forward. It's not, the city is not just about election. You can run for office, you can win and still sitting up here doing nothing because you worry about how the next election is going to happen. I'm not worried about that. Right now I'm running a city. What needs to be happen is that we have a budget of $800 to fulfill. 800000 800, $800, $800, <laughs> To fulfill. So that's how we're going to go about. Yeah. We will vote. For, I mean, I'm going to support it. Just for the fact that we need to continue with the city budget. And then later on, we'll come back with it. And then the police department and ATS will plead their cause. And the constituent will come, and they'll tell us exactly what to do. But right now, we made the mistake, and we balance the city budget with it, and we're going to move on to continue to lead the city move on towards. So Now, uh, one question for you, Chief. Have we, how many cities have done away with, uh, with the cameras? My, my understanding, currently there's 21, and I no. believe there was... No, and, I mean uh, in Miami Dade County. In Miami Dade County, there's 21 municipalities that still have it. I think there's two. One was El Portal, and El the other was El Miami. El Portal and Hialeah. North have Bay Village and, and Hialeah. Has, and has, Hialeah. Any, has anyone looked into checking with them to see what uh, whether their rate have decreased what since, I mean, uh, or increased okay. since they've done away with the uh, 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 cameras? Okay. Let me know if I'm saying something inaccurate, because I know staff, uh, we, we talked about this. Yeah. Um, dealing with North, let's talk about Hialeah, and I, I want to talk about that first of all. Um, pretty much with Hialeah, they, 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 it was a new um, person. <laughs> there was a new person in a leadership role and that came in and was not in agreement to continue with the contract, and as a result, went ahead and stopped the contract, ended the contract, the renewal, and actually the si Highland Police Department paid back, I think, like two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars back to end the contract and come to closure on it. That's dealing with Hialeah. And reason I also want to talk about Hialeah, the monies or revenue went back to the police department. I, I know Council McGowan, you, you mentioned that and I truly appreciate that, but I don't want to make that mistake. I don't think the men and women of a police department want to be in that predicament or in that situation where the money's coming from the real light cameras coming back to the police department. I, I have all the confidence in the city manager and the budget director. The, the perception, the, I, I don't think it, right. it sends the wrong would be ideal. It would send the wrong mess, I'm just saying. But don't, you I'm, I'm don't, to don't, don't your traffic <laughs> tickets come back to you? Um, no, everything goes to the general fund. But Everything goes to the general fund. Okay, I, I. But that's I, a fifty percent of the general fund. I'm, I'm about to m actually move that we continue this item. Uh, so either let's yeah. call a vote or, or let's, you know. Yeah. I still yeah. didn't, uh, but chief, I still didn't, didn't get my answer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. So that, that's highly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one was. Uh, to to so to see the, those cities. So that was highly. <laughs> city of highly. The other one was El Portal. I'm not. What's the back? Have El they? Have they No, no, no. I know El my Portal question, had it, and my he did was, it. My question was, since they took away the cameras, I mean, have they seen any increase? Oh, what are you going to do the research and the study, the data to find out what was the outcome of those cities yeah. once they removed the cameras? Once they removed That's something them, I yes. could, we could do research and inquire on it, but we did not do the research on so the other city once Mr. they removed the cameras and what was the outcome? So that that study can be 
You want to yeah. make that motion? I, I'll move. I'll withdraw my second to the maker's motion. And uh, if you're okay with it, move that we continue this two weeks so that you have the time to do that study and bring back. For I the second it. I, I'd like to ask a question. Is oh. this is I, are you going to be able to do this study in two weeks? Isn't this something that takes oh, I'm time? I'm not aware oh, with this how this that study is going to be conducted. Oh. I know there's two cameras in El Portal and North Bay it Village has three cameras. Uh, uh, just through, you know, through the chair, Mr. Mayor. Mm. Uh, I mean, okay, we're going to continue this for study. Are we really going to be able to get a study done? Then give you a month. Yeah. Uh, well, tell him again, what you should do. Just, just. Mr. What Mr. When you're Mayor, asking for a study, can we do a study? Just cover the okay, go ahead, months. Mr. Manager. The reason why this item is on your agenda is your the contract expires. It's Jan going to expire because we January need to do a study. January 22nd. Your city manager has no authority to approve anything over 100000 This body is the one that gives me direction. Under your present ordinance, I have no jurisdiction in authorizing anything over When does it expire? January 23rd. 23rd? That's Keep correct. Month this, month is until this, we is a, this is a what we can do. Keep it month, month to month until, until we, decide. we decide. If it's a done voice more than 100,000, you will bring it to us. Okay. We will so the motion is, is to continue it uh, and with a month to month? That's correct. On, yeah. on, so until we reconvene. Well, the three. existing contract was renewed for a six month period. So that's, it started July 2014. It will end January. So a six month will give us to what month? September? September. I'm telling you guys, do it oh six months and go to yeah, the Actually, quit. July. 